and the playing field for this game is in the mind. Oh, look at the condition of your mind. Antiquated ideas, bungling, false concepts, superstitions, confusion. To think straight, we'll have to clean house. This is indeed a disturbing universe. Hello, greetings, and welcome. Welcome to the Stereo 999 YouTube channel. Coming at you from the Vortex. I am your host, the artist formerly known as Stereo Steve. And I've been a little under the weather, but it's, it's been quite weather to be under, if I'm to be honest, because it's raining again. But I want to finish up the rest of these dots and loops 101 questions, because cause I wrote them all down in my notes, and uh, you know I don't want them to go to waste. And it's getting played out anyway. So this is going to be the final installment. Questions 70 through 101. Question number 70. Greatest splatter vinyl. Dave Mason's Alone Together. The Vortex likes this one. Which includes the hit song, Only You Know and I know. Here's the cover. Question number 71. You got ripped off record. And I'm going to play kind of loose with this question, but uh, let me just get into this story. Um, in the aughts and in the early 2010s, uh, there, were a lot of, there were a lot of younger people getting into 80s music and uh, digging up obscurities that those of us who were there back in the day never heard of because just because that's that's what happens and somebody asked me for a band that I've never heard of when I was on the radio called uh, the drowning craze and I was like huh what uh, uh, uh. and uh, so I did a little I did a little research and the drowning craze was an English post-punk band, and uh, the bass player went on to be in uh, Cocteau Twins, and they put out maybe a handful of singles. And uh, eventually, I found a reissue album of the Drowning Craze. Had their had their single Damp Bones and a few other tracks, and it's pretty cool. I'm glad I got this record. It's on some nice white vinyl. But here is the reason that this record is a ripoff. Because the actual plastic record has six songs on it. But then there's a sticker with a download code for you to download the entire 10 song album. And it's not, it would not have been that difficult to just put all 10 songs on a 12 inch record. And that's just a stupid gimmick and it's a ripoff and it's lazy. Uh, okay, question 72. Musty, crusty record that you can't throw out. Okay, well first I'm going to show you my good copy of this record. This is The Big Beats, live at the Off-Broadway. Not the On-Broadway, but the Off-Broadway in the 60s, where uh, Lenny Bruce performed. But I guess they were kind of a house band. They backed up Trini Lopez, according to the liner notes. And... Uh, they were pretty rockin', good versions of Got My Mojo Working and I'll Go Crazy and Hitchhike, Harlem Nocturne. I mean, this, this is a, just a fun early 60s, early rock and roll kind of record. It's on the Liberty label. 
So it's a live album that has very fake sounding applause, especially when certain songs fade out into applause. But this was a childhood record because most of my early childhood music was hand-me-down records from parents and relatives that I listened to on a little box record player. And I still have my beat to crap old copy of it from childhood. It's a promo. I don't know if you could see all the all the scratches and misery that this record endured. I think I think you can find work song on YouTube if you want to give it a listen. Alright, question 73. Speak and spell. Lots of talking parts. And uh, this is this is a favorite uh, 60 psych record, one of the first ones that I really got into. The Apple Tree Theater playback. And uh, I'm kind of thinking about doing a deep dive, but there's one or two records I still need to find to really tell the story. But uh, they were a duo of John and Terrence Boylan with a bunch of uh, studio musicians and it's kind of a concept album and there are little spoken word bits and skits between the songs which is how it answers that question okay question 74 bad production all right now uh, I want to make it perfectly clear that I am not dissing this record because it's one of the greatest albums ever made. MC5 back in the USA. But when you listen to it, you have to listen to it loud because otherwise it sounds kind of tinny, kind of a lack of bass. And that is because of a little something called the Fletcher Munson curve. This is a sound at 200 hertz. Say you wanted to know how loud a 200 hertz tone had to be before you could hear it. You'd find 200 hertz on the x-axis and follow it up to the curve, find where this part of the curve meets the y-axis, and you discovered that a 200 hertz sound has to be at least 12 decibels before you can hear it. Lower pitch sounds seem quieter, and at very low volume they have to be a lot louder to be heard. This is why people boost the bass when they're listening to music. So the human ear hears less bass at a lower volume, uh, more bass at a higher volume, and when they recorded and mixed this, they turned everything all the way up and didn't turn it down to, to see how the mix sounded at a lower level. But uh, inadvertently, this tinny sounding record of short, angry songs accidentally invented punk rock. Question 75. How did they do that? Amazing playing. Intermounting Flame by the Ma Vishnu Orchestra featuring John McLaughlin. Not the debate guy on, on PBS, but the guitar god John McLaughlin. And just the playing is just dazzling. Just the, the musicianship. It's it's you know, this is this is the crossroads where jazz fusion and prog rock merged. This is, this is a record to put on if you just want to be amazed. This uh, question 76, I don't get it record. All right, this band is called Spires That In The Sunset Rise. And uh, of course they mean some kind of mystical hobbity sunset, not the grimy sunset district of San Francisco, but this is one of those, I guess from, from, the, from the late aughts, one of those kind of freak folk records, and you know, supposed to be kind of like a, a incredible string band sort of thing, but it just sounds like every instrument is out of tune, and it's just, I just could not get my mind around it. Question 77. Free jazz me. All right. Well, this is Crisis by Ornette Coleman. 
And as you can see, it's got the Bill of Rights on fire. And that's a thing some people don't get about free jazz. You know, a lot of, a lot of detractors think it's just uh, chin-stroking wank, when a lot of times, you know, it was a political statement. And that's what it originally came from in the 60s, man. Question 78. Classic album that doesn't get played enough. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna interpret this question as classic rock album that needs more love. This is Chicago's seventh album, and it's a masterpiece. This is probably the last um, double album with long jams type Chicago record, recorded on Caribou Ranch. It's got the classic mixture of top 40 hits, like uh, on this one, Searching So Long and Wishing You Were Here, which has the Beach Boys doing background vocals. But then the whole first side is just this extended kind of fusion-y workout where they're just going crazy. If you really want to hear like Chicago when they were good before they turned into a lounge act, this Chicago 7. And uh, the cover is textured like real hand-tooled saddle leather. All right, question 79. Why this band only made one good album album? And uh, for that, we're going to... I'm gonna cut this vortex is making me it. In the movies, good guys wore white, bad guys wore black. But the real West. became popular heroes. Now, Time Life book shows the West like it really was. This book. Butch Cassidy's Wild Bug. John Wesley Harden, who shot a man for snoring. Gunfighters is yours for 10 days free. If you like it, receive volumes every other month. The Great Chiefs, the Gamblers, each has the look and feel of hand tool saddle leather. If you care about the West as much as I do, you want everything you need, like this great Sansui system with a full size record changer, these big three way 12 inch speaker system, and the Sansui AM FM receiver. A fantastic system, and at the American sound price of only $333. <laughs> The dark age is ending. Oh? Well, when? According to a few friends of mine, very soon. You think civilization's about to blow itself apart? No, that's one luxury it can't afford. Why, the Third World War has been going on for years, but everybody's been so busy watching the bleeding commercials they haven't noticed. Ah, that's better. Where was I? Oh yeah, let's see, question number 79. Why this band only made one good album album? Okay, um, for that I'm going to talk about Highland and Hard Rain by Aztec Camera. It's probably just a personal thing, but this record takes me back to 1983 along with R.E.M.'s Murmur and the Chameleon's Script to the Bridge. And uh, the songs really stick with me. And 
I don't know. I've tried listening to their other stuff, but none of their other stuff hits with me the way this album hits with me. But your mileage may vary. Tragic Story Album. All right, this is If Only I Could Remember My Name by David Crosby, which came out in 1970. And this record was basically a, a therapy session for Mr. Crosby. Uh, his uh, girlfriend, Christine Hinton, uh, was killed in a car accident and grief-stricken Crosby um, camped out at Wally Hyder studio in San Francisco with a lot of drugs and a lot of friends including Joni Mitchell and Jerry Garcia and recorded this album. As you see the setting sun forms a tear in his eye. I'm sorry album. Your partner loves it. You do not. Now anybody who knows me knows that I've been forever alone longer than people who've committed vile crimes for that same reason have been alive. But back when I was desirable enough to be with somebody, I could not stand this album that she would play all the time. But, you know, I've, I've come to appreciate this band more. I've come to appreciate Depeche Mode. I mean, I always thought their early stuff was kind of corny, but you know, I'm used to bands that start out good and then decline in quality. But I think that uh, uh, from Speak and Spell up until, uh, what's that one, uh, Violator, they improved over time. Back in the day, I was, I was more uptight about music. The question 82, people are wrong album. Tell us why the critics blew it. All right, well, for that television adventure, this is just a fantastic record. Great songwriting. It's a little more subtle than Marquee Moon. This is my pressing I've had since the 80s, which is on red vinyl UK pressing. And I just love this record. But I noticed when the expanded CDs were released in the aughts that the hip music magazines like Mojo would go out of their way to say that this record was not as good as their debut Marquee Moon and I was just baffled by that. The go-to of all go-to albums go-to of all go-to albums. Well, this is the litmus test. The Dark Side of the Moon by Pink Floyd. One of the biggest selling records of all time. And you know, along with the Beatles, along with the Beatles, if I ever run into somebody who says they don't like this record or that it's overrated, I know that they're just being a contrarian douche and I don't have to take anything they say seriously um, because it wouldn't have been on the charts for 14 years if it wasn't a masterpiece. This is an unusual pressing. This is a New Zealand pressing on the green harvest label. That's kind of cool. They ripped off another band album. All right. This is a band called uh, Fontenelle. Kind of indie, kind of post-rock record. They made some records on Cranky. I think there was a connection between them and Jessamine that was more of a space rock band. But I picked up this record. It's on... Uh, Southern Lord and it's called Vitamin F and basically what they're trying to do on this album is capture the sound of early 70s Miles Davis and it's just it's uncanny 
how how good a job they do with this. You know, play this album and and uh, Miles Davis' Big Fun back to back, and it's like the Ruddles and the Beatles. Question eighty five: A memory record brings back the old feels. Well, that would be the Cure, seventeen seconds. You know, I was I was miserable in high school. And uh, most of the music people were listening to was kind of 80s hair band party music. And I'm like, where is the music for miserable people? And this record, it's the sound of the weather outside. It's the sound of introspection. And uh, just the bass lines and the compositions and the gloom and it's 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 kind of comforting question 86 condition is crap who cares all right this is Dwayne Eddy especially for you which includes the song yep yep and uh, it's a UK pressing on London it's kind of taped together and uh, first of all a personal reason that I don't care is that uh, the day I got this record the day I got this record was in the 90s on a road trip with some dear friends none of whom I, I have any contact with anymore but uh, I was on a road trip with some of my best friends. We were looking to go to a record swap that was out of town. And we went to the school where the swap was supposed to be. And it was canceled. And they looked at us like we were from Mars. But we found an old, we found a store that had records. And this is one of the records I bought that day. And it looks a little banged up. But it plays totally fine, and uh, it's a relic from a, from a phase of my life. All right. See, I'm going all over the place with this, you know? See, this is like a therapy session disguised as record talk. <laughs> I can't spin disco, Venus. I can't do it. Not disco, man. I mean, I'd rather sell vacuum cleaners door to door. They make better music. What are you fooling, it, man? Question 87. Disco delight. All right. Well, this is this one's this is a kind of obscure disco record. Great album cover. Devil's Gun by CJ and Company. And I think it's the same run, run, run from the Devil's Gun of the band gun. This is on Westbound. Produced by Dennis Coffey and Mike Theodore. This is some early disco funk and it's it's got a groove. And I just love this artwork. All right. The heaviest and the hardest and I'm gonna go for something kind of obscure because I'm trying to remember if I talked about this record before or not I feel like I planned to talk about this record but but didn't actually talk about this record on this channel this band is called Manslaughterer not Manslaughter Manslaughterer and I think they're from Lincoln, Nebraska. Okay, this record is called Turn Me Loose by Manslaughterer. And it's heavy and noisy and I don't know what you'd call this, power violence or death metal or something. But there's, there's a weird sense of humor to it. Because as you can see, the song titles are... Uh, either sarcastic or song titles of other songs like Hot Blooded and South Side of the Sky and uh, 
when I first got this record, I brought it to a friend's house, and we were so S-T-O-N-D on the marijuanas, I couldn't figure out whether it was supposed to play at 33 or 45. But it's heavy, and it's on Bandcamp, so you can listen to it. Okay, question 89. I blush. Erotic City. All right, let's see if the algorithm will let me show this. This is Sleep Chamber, Submit to Desire. Some dark, industrial, creepy stuff from the edgy days when you needed dark, industrial, creepy stuff to be cool. And uh, I actually made this tent with a highlighter. <laughs> because I didn't care. Question 90. Iconic and influential album. All right. Marvin Gaye, what's going on? What needs to be said about this record? Is it just all one song disguised as an album? Maybe. But uh, it's a classic, and, you know, it's an artistic statement that was... Uh, Motown Records was not entirely sure would be economically viable, but it became a big seller and a classic. And this is a cool Japanese pressing with this red Tamla Motown label. That is just very cool. Question 91. Get Smart Album. They did something else in life like an invention. All right. This is Iggy Pop and James Williamson, Kill City. Green vinyl bump. Very cool record. And uh, James Williamson was the guitarist for the second lineup, the Raw Power lineup of the Stooges, replaced Ron Ashton. And I learned from that Iggy Pop documentary that uh, when James Williamson left the music biz he worked in Silicon Valley developing computer chips. Alright, workman-like album. Alright, for a work, workman-like album. Alright, well, Joe Satriani surfing with the alien. And what does Joe Satriani do? He plays guitar well. And uh, what do you get when you buy a Joe Satriani album? You get an album of well-played guitar. Nothing more, nothing less. I'm clever. Best lyrics. Bob Dylan, bringing it all back home. This is... Uh, I don't know if you'd call this transitional. I mean, because it's like one side electric, one side's more acoustic, and it's got a couple of his most iconic songs, Subterranean Homesick Blues and uh, Mr. Tambourine Man. It's All Right, Ma, I'm Only Bleeding, which uh, that song alone earned him his Nobel Prize, in my opinion. All right. Harmonies. Question 94. Harmonies. If you like the Beach Boys and you're a hipster, you want my advice? Give Pet Sounds a rest and listen to some of their actual surf music, especially this album. And All Summer Long is a great song. I get around. Little Honda, which there's not a smattering of resemblance to uh, the cover of that song by Yola Tango. And there's like, and they, they kind of goof off on this record too. And, you know, impeccable harmonies and goofing off. Tries Too Hard album. An album that tries too hard. With this album, I remember seeing in a bargain bin for 58 cents when I was a kid. And me and my dad just totally laughed at how ridiculous this record looked. This is Bob McGilpin's Superstar. 
and uh, he tried, man. He tried, but his record just ended up at Woolworths for 58 cents. But, you know, to his credit, this record went up in value over time because when I found it six years ago, it cost me a whole dollar. Okay, so this is the Bob McGilpin Superstar promotional package. First of all, the record is on this gray vinyl, and it's divided into the hard side, which is kind of disco, and the soft side, which is a little more... Yacht Rock. Here's the album with the gatefold with the lyrics and whatnot. And it came in this promotional box set here, Superstar, which includes a press kit. There he is. He's <laughs> got a press kit, Butterfly Records, a little poster. A major new artist emerges. Bob McGilpin! Yeah! And it also includes a cassette copy of the album. And, you know, some, some, uh, what do you call? I guess it's like an interview. I realize this title might succeed. Oh, it's like little descriptions of each song. Oh, Bob. <laughs> I hope you're all right, Bob. <laughs> Question 96. Standout. Album not great, but one killer performance. Right, I talked about this record before. This is Blood, Sweat, and Tears' fourth album. And... Uh, the song Go Down Gambling is one of their best songs. And uh, so far, I don't think anything else on the album is as good as that song. Brave New Waves, a courageous album. John Coltrane's Love Supreme, you know. He turned his life around and found God. And that's really what this is a concept album about. This is an OG monocopy. You can tell by this label. You can also tell because the spine is white instead of orange. Color Me Gone. Finished contract and mailed it in. Now, they're looking for, they're looking for something that's, that's musically crap and low effort. But uh, nothing this man ever did was musically crap or low effort. But the story behind this, this is Leather by Frank Zappa. And uh, when this was recorded, he was trying to get out of his contract with Warner Brothers. And he owed them four more albums. And what he wanted to do was release Leather as a four disc box set and be done with it. But Warner Brothers was not having it. So instead, this came out as four separate albums, orchestral favorites, Studio Tan, Sleep Dirt, and Zappa in New York. But this triple CD is an approximation of, of uh, what the four record box set would have been. Question 99. Time to die. Dead during or just after recording? Hmm. Okay. Jimi Hendrix. The Cry of Love. This was the first official posthumous release by Jimi Hendrix. And uh, he was working on 
an album with the working title First Rays of the New Rising Sun before his untimely departure. And you can find records and CDs with that title that are kind of trying to approximate. But uh, this, this was the first uh, release of a lot of those tracks. Soul My Soul to the Devil, question 100. The fastest fly and die sellout album in your collection. Huh. I don't know. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna do this. This is Herbie Mann Discotheque. Of course, the uh, jazz musician Herbie Mann mostly played flute, played a little bit of sax. This was his disco record that he made in 1976. He covered Pick Up the Pieces. Had a hit song called Hijack which when I was a kid, I found very amusing because, because there were a lot of stories in the news about plane hijackings. I thought he was kind of cashing in on that. But this is, this is a groovy record. And, you know, I, I was, you know, do I file this in jazz with my other Herbie Mann albums? Or do I file it in the rock, pop, and soul section? I don't know. Do 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 hijack. Do 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 your love. Okay, so finally, finally we're done with this. Finally, finally. Okay. Question one hundred and one. The last record you would sell in your collection. Well, if I were to sell all my records, I would do it in alphabetical order. And so the last record in alphabetical order would be ZZ Top. Okay, it looks like Bob McGilpin's on Spotify. Not the Superstar album, but uh, looks like he uh, made an album in 2014 and some singles in 2022. All right, so the Superstar is still out. If you enjoyed this therapy session disguised as record talk, give a like, give a subscribe, give a comment, just say hello. Feel free to, to make more suggestions of like bands or genres or labels or whatever that you want me to talk about. And thank you. Thank you for watching. Peace. God damn it, baby, no, I ain't lying to you. I'm only gonna tell you one time. <laughs>